So for those of you who couldn't catch that, I went through your textbook exercises. Um, again, if you feel like I'm, I'm keeping them at a too aggressive pace, just let me know. But again, these due dates are, you know, soft due dates. Have them done by this portion. Now, there is this pro there is this problem that now occasionally I, I've I've had some issues with things in the past. And let me know if you're just like if you spend more like than ten minutes on something. If you spend more than 10 minutes on like any single one of these problems, you're not supposed to. Please send me an e stop working on that, message me, because there might be something that's wrong with the problem and not wrong with you, okay? One example of that was this problem over here in the chapter six exercises, which isn't due for like, I think another week. And you notice I added like commentary over here, um, which is that we've got a quotation here. Um, and part of the issue that occurs, all right, says we look at some uh, at science some, as something very elite, which only a few people can learn. That's just not true. You have to start early and give kids a foundation. Kids live up or down to expectations. Now, part of that is that we need to split this up, and this is the code I I wrote for this one. Okay, actually, but let me go ahead over here, and it says, and so use the split function to split this quote into four pieces based on the occurrence of the period punctuation and print out each piece one at a time. So it's asking you to print out basically each sentence using the split function. And I just did a very quick version of this. And if you haven't hit that area yet or haven't gone to there, that's fine. We're gonna cover going uh, iterating over sequences today. But um, we look at this, okay? And that's fine, but let's go ahead and do it like you were doing it from scratch, which is that you would grab this giant quotation over here and paste it into the quotations. And note, sorry, paste it over here into your variables. Okay. And notice that it went, ah, sorry. Notice that it went from being, you know, the normal color that we see for strings. And now that color is like completely gone. And if we look at this, okay, first of all, uh huh, just need to do. do, do. Yep, there we go. And if you notice what happened here, there's something different about the quotation marks. Pretty hard to see, especially if you're far away. So I'm going to zoom in like crazy. So there, there it is. You see that? Looks kind of like uh, like eyes. Whereas the normal quotation mark for your strings look like this, two little tick marks, right? But when I copy and pasted this. From the HTML, even though the original source code I had for this said use, you know, check marks, it came out like this. And that's because, well, the way we render stuff in, in documents like HTML can be a bit different, right? It gave me basic, right? In, in text, you have open quotation marks, like in when you're writing a doc file, you've got open quotation marks and you've got closed quotation marks that are slightly curved. But when we use strings and we use quotation, you know, double quotes in, in our, you know, in our programs, it's always straight, you know, it's always these straight up and down tick marks. Okay. So we can run, so that's pretty straightforward for most students to figure out. They just replace that, notice it's not working and then they run it. And then they get that they've done it right, wrong, wrong, sorry, right, wrong, right, right, right. So passing all of the tests and they just don't, and you're like, I don't see what's going on here. Why isn't that working? Well, it's because the same thing happens here with the apostrophe symbol, which is different than the single quote symbol, which the document, which the program is expecting. So why am I keeping this in here, even though it has this problem? Because I because I wanted because I want because when you hit this, you know, again a week later when you barely remember this lecture, I want you to, you know, hit this when when it's a low stakes circumstances rather than when you're like experiencing it your first time during your junior year and you're wondering what the heck's going on, a am I the problem? No, it's the fact that basically text is weird. Text is so very weird. Like everything in your computer is defined by a fractal level of weirdness. 
the way text is rendered, the kind of way that converged to be UTF-8, the current format for doing text, the way that uh, the way that basically graphics is done. I mean, why in the world? I mean, so for instance, this is part, uh, your graphics use a coordinate plane with this, that corner up there to your top right, sorry, top left, that's zero, zero. This is the positive direction, and this is the positive direction for y. That's the positive direction for x. This is the positive direction for y. Again, fractal weirdness that you just kind of understand eventually. But the text thing can really trip you up if it's your first time experiencing it. Um, and, and some of those are just understandable as to why that happens when you understand it. But something that is not understandable is the topic of today's lecture, which is passwords. But before we get into that, I just want to remind people that uh, that this is week four. We will probably have our exam. I've, I'll decide when our, Nick, whether our exam will be on on your fifth lab or your sixth lab. I will I'll figure that out. Okay, your exam will be in your lab. And I'm going to figure out whether that means it's on Friday next week or Friday or or Friday the 24th. It really just depends on how. And of course, it would be the following Monday for those of you who have Monday. So uh, I guess they get to be lucky there. Um, but I tr do try to figure. I will try to figure out uh, more details of that. I just want to decide the best way to do that, as well as whether or not you're going to be ready, because I want to test for loops and turtles on that which is the topic of this for, uh, this next upcoming lab. Okay. So, all right. Uh, but th again, you'll have at least a week's notice and you will get a practice exam. And I will go over the practice exam in one of our lecture periods before we do the actual exam. Okay. And, la and last as a reminder, if you, if you have to miss the exam for some reason due to illness or or just like a sudden accident or something like that, or something crazy has, act, has happened, let me know why you're missing it and just you know, send me an email and we'll reschedule. I try to be very, uh, very understanding about these kind of things. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at today's, um, today's exercise. Let's see, and I am recording, good. So this module, right, is module four, turtle sequences and for loops. Uh, turtles are covered a bit, in, for loops are covered a bit in turtles. I think maybe a bit in sequences, I can't recall, but we learned a bit about how to do repetition. Um, Tuesday, we look at creating random, we, we, we worked up again, and here we list that we're creating random passwords. Right, okay, so I just need to fix that. Give me that link, give me one second. I knew I missed something. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I got everything, but no, missed something, do linked options. If you want, if you like clicking on it through here. Done, and save. So now that link is good for our exercise for today, but you can also find our today's exercise by clicking on our textbook. No, I didn't want to do that. To clicking on our textbook, scrolling all the way down to the exercises and clicking on project five, which is generating a password XKCD side, which requires us to learn about sequences and repetition. Fortunately, you've been working with sequences for a while now. Uh, specifically, you've been working with strings and hopefully you've taken the time to look to to look at the lectures on lists a bit. If not, they're not going to be too hard. Uh, a list is just a sequence, and you know what a list is because you've been working with a list your entire life. The only thing that's going to be weird is maybe a bit of how it's rendered, but it's understandable. So this uh, again, the the idea here is that uh, the the XKCD they write a lot of stuff about computer science and math. Um, and this is one, and apparently the, the textbook author is a bit of a fan. I mean, so am I, so I understand that. So Temple, one of the things they really do well is the password, pol at least the IT team does well is the password policy. 
You may have seen that when generating your password that the more characters you add, the less weird characters you have to add to your password. So for instance, like you're often, when you're asked to make a password, you're often required to say, okay, you need eight letters with zero, you know, with a, with a number, a capital letter and a weird symbol, right? So typically what you do is you take some kind of base word that, so you can remember what the password is because you're not designed to remember like eight random thing, you know, eight random characters. Um, and then you capitalize some of it, you swap out some, make some common substitutions. Zeros for, you know, zeros for O's somewhere, A's for, sorry, fours for A's, those kind of things. Um, and then maybe you add in a, like a weird stuff on the end. Okay. And the idea here is that that is not that um, hard, hard if somebody's just trying, if somebody has a way of brute force cracking it. It's a bit hard to do that on, on a lot of good web services. Like you'll, if you, again, if you try to enter the password too many times for some stuff, you get locked out of the account. Other things require two factor authentication, which is extremely useful. You should totally use that for anything you really care about. Um, but the difficulty for a computer to guess it, if it's just trying to crack it, um, just kind of by running that, if it can do about, assume that a computer can make a thousand guesses a second if, the, if they have direct access to it and it's not being prevented, it's fairly easy. It takes about three days. So, and for you to remember this all, it's pretty hard, okay? But if you take four random words, glue them together, like correct horse battery staple, that provides a lot more variance in what it, whatever the word can be, a lot more variance, which at the same rate of guessing requires 550 years to crack at a thousand guesses per second. And the difficulty, so it's hard for the computer to guess, but easy for a person to remember, right? Difficulty remember, correct horse battery staple, you've already memorized it. Um, and it says through 20 years of effort, we've successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but for easy for computers to guess. Again, the most, and as a result of these dumb password policies, the most common passwords are password and one, two, three, four, five. You know, it's the same combination that's on my luggage. It's baseball's reference there. All right. So, the idea here is let's start by make, by creating a traditional random password composed of numbers, letters, and a few special characters. Uh, we don't have any special characters here, but we're just going to use numbers, capitals, and letters here. Now, to do this, we need to use a couple of tools here, okay? The first thing we need is we need, um, we need to use the random module. It, it just makes this our job way easier, okay? And if we look at the Python, Python random module, right? And we just look at the docs, right? This tells you all the things that, that the random module in Python can do, right? These are not for warning. This should not be used for security purposes. It should, for security or cryptographic uses, see the secrets module, which makes sense. Randomness is actually, so, Again, like I've said, we're not going to get into a huge philosophical debate about what is truly random. Okay. Like if I can, if I flip a coin and I'm given all the, you know, the outcome is ostensibly random, but if I'm given all of the inputs, like the amount of force that I'm that I'm putting in, the air pressure, the way the the air is moving, the composition of the coin, all those, the more details I have, the more I can make an accurate prediction to the point where it's not really random anymore if I've got enough, you know, to simulate that or predict it. Um, but so, so your computer cannot generate random stuff. What it can do is generate pseudo random stuff, stuff that it will say, if you want it to be statistically random, meaning that the everything is gonna kind of come out uh, in a probability, you know, following a certain probability, you know, in a way of like, if you want to basically try to assign things fairly at random, this is the kind of thing you would do. So there's a couple different things that you can do. 
But part of the, sorry, but part of the reason is this seed thing. You can provide random with a seed to initialize it, which means that, that if you initialize it with some seed, which is like a number or something, then it's going to produce the same results every time. Okay. If you don't provide it, it just uses the system time as a seed, which is that's why it's not purely random. If somebody can predict the time, they can predict the uh, the outcomes of it. Um, but it's but it's good enough for statistics, um, which is what we need here. So you can give me a random a random range of numbers, give me a random integer. But here is the one that I find really useful because it, it exists na naturally in Python and didn't really exist in a lot of other languages that I used. They could have added it in later, but it's this random.choice sequence returns a random element from, from the non empty sequence sequence. So let's go ahead and take a look at idle for a second. So I'm going to just simply boot up the, the, um, uh, idle so that I can talk to uh, the interpreter directly, tell to import random. And now I'm going to give it a string. So I'm going to call it word. And the word is going to be bird, assuming I can spell it, right? And so what I can do is I can say random.choice is equal to the word. And it's going to give me one of the four letters of bird. And here, it gave me I. And if I call it again, it's going to say that that returned a B, I again, R, I, I, B, I, I, B, I, D. It's random. And if we do this like a million times, they should be relatively equal. They're never going to be completely equal because that would be predictable. I mean, we can't, it's never going to guarantee that they're completely equal. It is possible to get an e you know, equivalence, but it's not very likely. So it just gives you a, ran a random thing. We can save that in an output, in a variable. Answer is equal to random.choice. And then we can use that later. I can also even just concat, I can also concatenate that. Right? Answer is equal to answer plus that. Remember, can, what does concatenation do? It's just simply what happens when you add two strings together, meaning if you add two strings together, it just kind of glues them together. So, and if I ask for the answer again, it's going to say BB. And one more time, it's going to say it's going to add a new, new thing to the end of that. Oh, I did it wrong and forgot to, I needed to grab this. So it starts at I, then we'll do it four more times. So we'll have four letters on there. I, 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 interesting. Am I doing it wrong? Nope, I'm not. Again, random things happen. One in a million ch uh, chances happen nine times out of 10. I mean, it, just just watch any any movie. One million chances chances happen nine times out of ten. Um, so anyway, what we can do here is that this gives us a way to pick letters at random for a password. Okay. And also, if we're making it a eight-letter password, then what does that mean we have to do? We also have to have an accumulate, we have to have a way of accumulating those eight letters or characters or numbers. So this one says, make a, so the first task is to make an eight letter password by combining characters from the three strings. So go ahead and take a shot at this one and then we'll go over this one. Okay.
then feel free to work with the people next to you on this. You don't have to be super quiet about it. If you're having trouble getting started, let me simplify things for a second. Valid cars is equal to letters plus caps plus numbers. We can combine them all into one into one variable. The next step would be to make an accumulator over here. Password is equal to quotes. And if you haven't done this before, that's okay. It's kind of a logical leap if this is your first time encountering it. Then the next step would be we need a for loop. For in range eight to do the to do some command eight times and then at the end of this we print out our password so the, so the question is what do we put in the do some So if you're still having trouble with that, you can come to and figure that out. But again, the idea here is that we're using the accumulator pattern. We're doing it in a different way, though. The idea here is that we've got some password. It starts out as empty, just like how our numbers when we're using the accumulator pattern start out at zero. Yes.
There are a bunch of you who are getting stuck. I will be going over this. So, so this one is a bit tricky because if if you haven't kept up to the, with the textbook, it's possible it's possible you haven't hit the accumulator pattern yet using uh, the the um, you know using quotation marks. We did the accumulator pattern back last week with um, the with numbers, and that made sense. The idea here is that we had a for loop, and we had a, some we had some running tally that we kept adding to. The idea here, though, is that we can take the same concept and do it with letters. So let me just open up this editor over here. So we've got, um, so if I've got some number of letters over here, letters is equal to A, B, C, D, E. I can iterate, these, this is what we call refer to as a sequence. And what I can do with any sequence is that I can iterate over it for L in letters. Print L. I like to do four singular and plural, but it confuses some people if I write four letter and letters. That's the way I like to write it. But so I'm going to just simply do four L in letters. And we see that I get A, B, C, D, E printed out. Okay. But what we can do with an accumulator, right? What we did with the running sum was if I, is that I had something like this, total is equal to zero. And then what I would do is that I would basically do total is equal to the previous amount that total, it, the current amount total is plus something, let's say plus one over here. So take what was stored in total, add one to it and store that in total. And I could print total. And that's a running, and that we did that running sum with our with uh, a, a number of times back on Thursday. Okay, the idea here though is that we can do the same thing with sequences. In uh, almost every programming language allows it with strings. Python is cool because it allows you to do with with both uh, strings and lists. So let's talk about this. Letters is equal to A B C D E. Then we've got ourselves. Password, or let's say just text over here. Text is equal to. So when we were doing uh, this pattern over here to accumulate with a number, we started out with total is equal to zero. Why? Because zero is the identity of uh, functions as the identity for addition, meaning that it is the number that if you add, if you add anything to zero, you get the number back. 
one functions as the identity for multiplication, right? If you multiply anything by one, you get the same thing back. Similarly, for text concatenation, the empty string functions in the same way as a zero does for a running sum. If you add anything to an empty string, you get the same string back. So over here, I'll just simply do, comment this out for a second. Text is equal to this. And if I say text is equal to text plus some letters right here, And it doesn't do anything, of course, because I didn't print anything. It is a common mistake that you, that you will make, and a common mistake I still make to this very day. This was not a, this was not something I did on purpose. Some letters right here, printed out, boom. So, right, it's, this is an empty string. If I had this as a space, we would see that it's kind of indented a bit because it has an empty, it has a space in front of it. On the other hand, if I just simply do it like I had it set up. No space. So the idea here is that any, so now what are we gonna do? Well, the idea here is that I can take, if I have some things I wanna add individually, I could say uh, for L in letters, I could do a text dot, Text is equal to text plus L. And again, got to print out my answer in order to get something out. There you go. And A, B, C, D, E. It added each of those letters individually over there and printed it out. Now, how does this help us over here? We got to do concatenation over here. We have password, which is going to, which is our accumulator here. And then rather than doing, uh, iterating over each of these individual le letters and adding them one by one, which would give us the same password each time, we want to do the same thing each time, each time, which is take a letter at random or character at random from this combination of valid characters, right? Trying to select whether you're selecting letters, caps, or numbers randomly. That adds in one extra level of variability that I just don't want to deal with. So I'm just making them one big giant string over here. And now I can't choose one thing at random from the, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one thing at random each time from the valid, from this level of valid strings. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, our, I'm going to call it selection. I'm going to split this up into two lines. Selections is, selection is equal to, and you can use anything you want over here, but I like to use words. Selection is equal to valid cars dot choice. And sorry, not valid cars dot choice. I reverse that. Random dot choice that from valid cars. And there we go. And that's going to choose a random letter. And now we have to do something with it. We want to add it to our accumulator. Okay. And so how are we going to do that? How do we add it to our accumulator? Any suggestions? Yes. If I set pa close, if I set password equal to selection, it's going to just simply change it, it to whatever the letter currently is. Right. Oh, give me one second. Random is not defined. What did I forget to do here? I forgot to import it because I imported it when I was playing around with it, but I didn't actually do it there. And so here, what it does is that you choose a random letter, you select it, and then you take what that letter is and you store it in password. So we're not accumulating it. Accumulating it means that we need to take what we already have and add our selection, right? So what this should be now. What can we change it to? Yes. Yep. To. Yep. Password plus selection. We can shorten this accumulator, by the way, using the following shortcut plus equals. You may have seen that a couple times using it with numbers. You can do that with any add operation. 
But while we're starting out, I like to be very explicit about the way this works. So we choose a letter and then we add that letter to our accumulator. And we get a uh, foo 92 DAC apparently as our password. Very, very um, clear what that password is. Uh, this one I can't even pronounce. Not even gonna try that one. Uh, ROM, and then some, this seems like, like it's a soft, this sounds like it would be a software uh, wares group. GP, oh, GP of UberG, eh, that's not too hard to remember. But these are basically, you know, these are fairly random. I mean, if we wanted to add punctuation, we could add it pretty easily just by doing the following. Punct is equal to, and then whatever special characters we want to add, like period, exclamation point, um, dollar sign. Sure, let's just do that right now. And then I can add plus punct over here. And now we get some passwords that will start showing up with some with some symbols in them too. So again, I'll hit the share code over here. But I saw some students were having some issues with the share code for some reason. But the idea here is that we use the accumulator pattern and we can use it on things other than just adding. Sometimes we do accumulation with multiplication, although that's very rare. It's, it's actually rare to do accumulation with multiplication than it is to do it with letters. Okay. This, on the other hand, is fairly common. Uh, not this particular one, but I mean, the idea here of getting characters and then adding them to, to something. Now over here, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do it with lists. Now, lists, if you haven't hit that part yet, are fairly straightforward. They are also sequences. They work the same way. They have the same. And if you've, if you've read about indexing, then they have the same idea of using indexes as, as strings. If you haven't hit indexes, then don't worry. We don't use indexes in this, in this one. But a list looks like this. L is equal to, and then the contents of the list are inside the brackets over here, your square brackets, okay? And then you just put whatever you want inside the list separated by commas, and it's gonna be in order. The first, for instance, my, my list could be one, two, three, four, five. And then I can, and then if I re ask it again, it's gonna tell me, hey, you have a list of five items. And if you wanna iterate over it for, for thing in L, you can, again, I can use whatever letters I want, whatever I want as a variable over here, print the thing. And it does so. It goes over, over it iterates over the stuff in the list. Here, in this one, we have a bunch of lists. We have three, sorry, we have three lists, three very large lists. One that's a list of nouns, like tissue, processor, headquarters, favorite, cure, bunch of verbs, and a bunch of adjectives, which thankfully they just simply abbreviated to AGJS, adjectives, closer, national, pale, encouraging, historical. And now the idea here is that we're going to try making one of those easier to remember passwords by selecting, make a four word password by combining words from the list of nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And this follows the same format. This is done pretty much exactly the same way as we did it over here. pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is the name of the variables. Don't let the fact that these things are lists scare you. It's done exactly the same way. Same idea, randomly choose, combine them into one thing. We can combine lists. That's a feature that's kind of 
if you're if you're coming from a different uh, a different programming language, that may seem like anathema to you. But in Python, that's cool. Uh, one two plus two one uh, plus two three, or rather, let's do that. Will be one two two three. You'll just combine lists. If you've got two lists, combine them into one list. No problems there. So we can do. So if I've got some. So if I've got. Um, so. So for instance, if I've got two lists like herd, herd and word, and the and bird, it always it it combines them into one into one list. The items in the list, it doesn't care what it is. Um, in 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 Python. All right, so give yourself a chance. And again, I'm going to leave the code up here from the previous one so you can reference it. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bit so that it's so that it's less complicated. Run that, and there we go. So there we go. I'm going to leave that up there for reference as to what you're working on. But again, it's the same thing. And I appreciate you some of some of you noticing the stealth jokes I'm making. Yeah. 
All right, so we're going to do this from scratch for the other for this one. Almost, I see that a lot of that, that there's even if you had trouble on the first one, there's a lot of oh, I can see it in in for example A, and I can transfer it to example B, which really is a good useful skill for this. So what we're going to do is first off, I'm not going to forget this time to import random. Made that mistake the first time, right? Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say words. I could call this valid words or whatever. I'm just going to call it words because words is short and easy to type. And there's less of a chance of me misspelling it. And I have trouble even spelling misspelled. So, so let's go ahead and do nouns plus verbs plus adjectives. And one thing you can do as you're starting out is to print out your operations after you do them to make sure you, they had the intended effect. So for here, I printed out those words. And now everything is together. Not just the verb, I'm sorry, not just the not just the nouns, but also the verbs and the adjectives are in here as well in words. So that's good. And now that I'm done with it, I can either delete it or comment it out. Because once it's there, I don't need it. Once I've confirmed that it's working, I don't need the printing. I don't need the debugging to clutter it up. So next step is, is to do our for loop. Well, actually, we know we have to make our accumulator first, right? It's very common for you to write your accumulator, your for loop first, and then forget, oh, yeah, I need an accumulator, totally. So again, we're going to call our accumulator password because that is what we are making. Password is equal to, well, empty string because, well, not empty string. Yeah, empty string this time. Yeah, because we're choosing words out of this. I got a little mixed up here for a second, but yeah. For in range, and because we're doing four words this time, right? We're going to do our, we can do this in, what we can do is that I had it as one word last time, which I would say selection is equal to random not choice. I'm just going to skip that line. I'm going to say password is equal to password, 
our, so inside password, I want to store that what's currently in the password concatenated with a random choice selected from words. So all I'm doing is just combining those two lines into one line, right? All I've done here is the following. I used to have this selection is equal to random not choice. So I had this. And instead, I decided to do this. Both of these are valid options. Not one. The only advantage that the, the first one is, sorry, the uh, this way of doing it is shorter and less memory intensive. But I'm going to keep doing it the other way we had it. Because guess what? That's easier to read. And reading is everything when you're coming, to, when you're coming at this from a, be from a beginning stage. So random dot choice, we store that in selection, and then inside password, what are we going to store? The current value of password plus selection. And if we run this, it will do nothing because I did not print it, right? Very common mistake. That time was deliberate. First time I did that, wasn't. And of course, what is it saying? It's saying bad input on line nine. Oh, right. There we go. And it does nothing. So now... What we have to do is we print our output, print password. And it's going to print out lame add operate store. If I run it again, it's going to go horrible arrest present. OK. That's like a story right there. Uh, impose bake busy tune. Uh, session closer, see clean. Consider cure tissue inspire. So these are a bit hard to read though, because they're all glommed together, but they're easy to remember if you want, if you want to choose one to remember as a password. So one way we can do, we can do this is to separate it out as for us humans is that we could, there's a couple different ways. First, we could add a space. Now this way is actually a bit more complicated than the other way I'm going to do because, well, so what I'm doing is saying here is my password, what I currently have. At the end of that, I want to add a, a whatever selection is, whatever the chosen word is, and a space to the end of that. And so I get, so I chose bottle and space, added that to password, isolated in space, added that, ideology in space, and serving, added to that. Oh, and space added that. So you see that there's a little empty space hanging around at the end of there. This is something we'll deal with later called the fence posting problem, where basically you've got yourselves where basically you've got yourself, your fence posts and your pieces of fencing. So your fence posts in this case is your, your words and then, the fen and then the fencing is the space between them. And you see that we've got one more piece of fencing on the outside than we wanted. So there's a couple ways to do that, to handle that. The first is to do a slice operation, which gets into stuff that you're not fully comfortable yet with doing yet, but comes natural once you know how to do this. And there it's gone, thanks to the slice operation. But that's a bit harder to do. Plus now you have to the space key every time you want to put in a password and that feels weird, right? I mean, it, it's valid once you think about it. You, there's nothing stopping you from putting spaces in passwords, but it's weird because we've been trained all our lives to do these weird one word passwords. So instead, let's try to keep it as one long word, which we will do. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function from the string library called cap it capitalize, which doesn't turn the word into all caps, right? Instead, it does the capitalization that you would expect out of, you know, for writing, for doing a title or something. Right? So, and as you can see, it makes our word camel case with starting from capital. So loud, keep, headquarters, willing. It's e much easier to read than it is all glommed together because those, those capital letters act as 
separators. Why is invest warm acquisition? Amazing <laughs> advise ideology busy. And this down over here says that, you know, it says we do not make, this won't make most IT uh, departments or colleges or diseases happy. They want to have at least one capital letter, letter check, did that. I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this over here. Capital letter and, your num and a number in your password. We'll learn more about this in a couple chatters, uh, chapters, but it's easy to replace parts of a string with a different string. So for instance, you could do pool dot replace O with E, and that would replace all the O's in pool pool with E's, which gives you peel. And then it says you could basically do some random letter substitutions. And it kind of just shows you the way that you could go forward, right? So what we could do here to do those common substitutions, you know, we've already done the capitalization, but they're talking about like replacing one letter with another. Specifically, what they're talking about is replacing uh, letters with, you know, you know, certain numbers. So we could do a couple things over here. One common thing you can do is like add a random symbol to the end, you know, make your case very strong, add a exclamation point at the end or a number or something. Or we can just simply put those in over here. We could say password.replace all the, so the most common letter in the alphabet is an E. So we're gonna replace all the E's with threes, which starts getting into that annoying territory again, but it's something you can do and it doesn't, it's annoying, but again, I would rather keep the other other way of doing it. Now for the now the reason I'm kind of just skimming by this one is because I find this last one a bit more interesting. Okay, because it goes into even more stuff that we haven't covered yet. But again, I like doing these in class exercises, even if they seem scary at first, because they give you a way to expose yourself to this material in a way in, before you actually do so in the textbook. Like on your own, I mean. So let's suppose you do have a four character password composed of on, o, only lower cases, right? Suppose we have our password was A, B, C, D. Okay, a very bad password. How many guesses does it take to guess the password? Right? So let's say our password is A, B, C, D. How long would it take for the computer to find that password? Now, we can actually write a program and it says we can actually write a program to create a four letter character string and compare it to the known password. If we do this process inside a loop, we can keep track of how many guesses it takes us to find the matching password. So let's take a look at this because there's a lot of things that go on in this code right over here. A lot of things that we haven't seen yet, but are worthwhile to know about. So I'm gonna just simply scroll that up so we can scroll down through it. Okay. First line, import random. We know that imports the random library. Import sys, which is short for system here. Okay, that imports the system library. It's not something you will use often in this class, but it is useful to know it, it handles things that are like system level operations. Because what this one, this one over here, sys.sex is set execution limit. And it says over here, 60 seconds. Now remember, your computer, sorry, the, the this, if you run something, it runs for a while in here, eventually in your web browser, it will automatically crash because it assumes in this textbook, you don't want to do something that crap, that, that, that goes on forever. It could lock up your screen, you know, your web browser, and then you could lose all your other tabs or whatever information you had in your tabs. And that's just a bad time. So by setting an execution limit of, of, of by default, it's 30 seconds. Just make sure that you're not going to that it will crash after 30 seconds if it doesn't finish running. This raises that limit to 60 seconds, a full minute to run. So here, my password is ABCD. 
guess number. So this will keep track of the number of guesses we that our computer is going to make trying to guess this password. Done is equal to false. False is a Boolean va value, meaning it's an, it's either true or false, one or the other. Now, this is the other kind of loop we deal, deal with here. While not done. So we've got two types of... Now, programming languages have two types of loops. They've got for loops and while loops. In general, sorry, we could live without one of those loops. We could do everything we could do with a while loop. We can we can mess around with a for loop in other programming languages to do. Everything in a for loop in other programming languages we can mess around with and do a while loop. In Python, it's a bit more distinct, but in general, we could get by with just one loop. So why do we have two types of loops? For loops are more useful for what we call determinate loops. When we know exactly how long our loop is going to last, or relatively how long. For instance, we said, let's let's choose eight letters or four words, or we're going to go through every character in this string, or it's going to go through every item in this list. Some kind of determinate kind of limit. You can figure out how, how long it's going to take. However, if you're dealing with randomness, while loops are better, or you're dealing with user input, while loops are better. These are what we call indeterminate loops, meaning you can't really predict how long it's going to uh, um, how long it's going to last. A common example of this is getting input from the user where you want to ask them, do you want to continue? Yes or no. And they put potato instead, you know, and so you prompt them again to answer yes or no. And they say, why aren't you giving me my potato recipe? And you say, continue, yes or no. Um, you know, basically just rejecting input from the user until, until they get the correct prompt, give the correct prompt, yes or no. Um, and you have no idea how, how long the user is going to enter text into the wrong window for. So, so that's a good example. Here, we don't know when we're going to guess the password. So what we're, si what we're doing here is that we have a loop that says, while not done, while done is false, while not done. So while not done, not done. So not false becomes true, right? It flips it around. So, and while statements run so long as this condition is true. This is actually a very common way that, or at least common for me, way that I write things while it's not done. And then at some point we flip it to done to make sure that this ends. So we have some guest password. We put our code here, right? This is inside the while loop. You can tell because it's indented. And then we have an if statement. An if statement only executes if this is true. If the guest password double equals my password, e double equals is literally an equality check, right? That you would use like if less than or greater than or greater than or equal to. Double equals is that checking if two things are equal. Give me a true or false. Why do we do double equals? Well, because we use assignment, the single equals for assignment operator and we use double equals because we use the assignment operator what a lot more. So that the assignment operator wins that one. Anyway, so if guest password is equal to my password, if those are the same, print out the number of times we found how many guesses it took and print out done. Sorry, and then not print out done. Flip it to true, flip done to true, which will stop the education uh, the execution of this because that will be while not true, which will flip it to false while false will not execute while the condition is false, so it stops. So right over here, if we run this right now, it's going to lock up my screen for a minute. So I'm not going to do so. Instead, what we need to do is write the password or write the code to guess the password. So what we have to do is we got to make sure that this is equal to this. I'm going to set the execution limit to about 10 seconds right now to kind of demonstrate, right? If I if I say that the guest password is ha ha, right? I'm not going to do anything with it. It's going to just run for 10 seconds, trying to it's just continuously running this loop. See that it, it's kind of locked up here. Very long 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yep, there it goes. Error, program exceeded time limit, right? That's a feature, not a bug. Okay. On the other hand, if I send it equal to A, B, C, D, which is the password I'm looking for, it ends pretty much instantly because that's the password it's looking for. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to randomly generate 
this. This is our accumulator over here, and we're going to randomly generate letters. Now, I could type out all the letters in the English alphabet, but who has the time? We have that up here, remember? Boom. Copy. Scroll down. Paste. Letters is equal to this, and then it works the same way. Notice that even though we imported random, we didn't use random anywhere. We're meant to use random. And we do it the same way we've been doing this. So for in range four, so do the following thing four times. Guest password is equal to guest password plus, and then we need to randomly choose a letter from that. Random dot choice four letters, All right? Just randomly select. While not done, get your password. Get your password here. Look at your letters. Select that. And then if the guest password is the password I'm looking for, found it after that many guesses. So that does mean we have one more thing to do. We have to increment the, sec the second accumulator, which is the number of guesses. So I'm going to say guess, uh, guess num. All right. Well, first I'll run it and then I'll show you why I need to do that first. Okay. So I'll run this and it's going to take a while. It may actually not find it in the 10 seconds. Oh, it did find it. Never mind. Found it fairly quickly. Run it again, and we can tell when it finds it or when it quits because this will stop executing. Yep, didn't find it in time. Again, it's a random process. But how many? But when we did find it very quickly, it printed out z that it took zero guesses because we set the number of guesses that it took equal to zero. So every time we make a guess, we should increment that by one. Guess num plus. Sorry, guess num is equal to guess num plus one, which we can shorten, which and that gets shortened all almost always into the following statement. Plus equals one. Now, for those of you coming from a different programming language, you may be wondering, wait, Professor Rosen, why not use plus plus? Because plus plus is bad according to Python. That doesn't have plus plus. How can plus plus be bad if you're, you know, if you're coming from Java? Why, why would you use plus equals one as opposed to plus plus? Because if, unless you, unless you really dug deep into your programming languages book, you might not know that this plus plus, that variable plus plus is different, drastically different than plus plus variable, even though they appear to do the same thing. But the consequences of doing one versus the other is extremely dire and causes has caused so many bugs in the past that they're like, okay, let's stop giving you the ability to do this in line. That's more harm than good. So we're just going to keep it to this. But what does plus equals one means? It means it's just a shortcut for guess num is equal to guess num plus one. Basically, this says take whatever is in here, add one to it. There you go. And now if I run this, I'm still running on 10 seconds. So let's see. If it doesn't run in 10 seconds, I will go and up it. Okay, so it exceeded the time limit. So let's go ahead and set that back to the 60 second time limit. So the issue with guessing things like this, oh, it went very quickly this time, 19,614. So run it. The issue with guessing things like this is that it's a bit swingy. It takes a while sometimes for it to reach that password. And sometimes it takes a while for it to not reach the password. Also, because it's random, we don't have any control over whether or not it's repeating one number versus another, you know, one combination versus another. If we're unlucky, we could like roll um, the same combination of letters the same time, you know, multiple times. We could do 
A, 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 A multiple times. And, but as you can see, guessing a four letter password, if we know that it's made up of four letters, takes no time at all. So rather than trying to do this last one, I'm just going to kind of map, uh, use math yuck, to show you why that is. Okay, and the reason that is, gets to do with how many choices there are for passwords, right? If you're using a four letter password in English, okay? We have 26 different letters in the English alphabet, right? So we have 26 possible letters for A, sorry, for a first letter, 26 letter, possible letters for the second one, 26 possible letters for the third one, and 26 possible letters for the next one. Okay. Idle, tell me how much that is. 26 times 26 times 26, that's 26 to the fourth, right? So 26 to the fourth, that is 456,000 possible letters. Okay, and here, it, as, as you can see here, it hits some random, it hits some, it hit the, sometimes it hits the same ones. This one, it took less than that because again, it's guessing at random. It takes no time at all for it to generate this many, you know, combinations. Now, if we up this to five letters and five letter password instead, that means there's 26 more possible letters. We have one more position which has 26 possible letters, right? So what does that do? That means that we've got 26 to the fifth, which according to this would be 26 to the fifth. And that multiplies that result by 26. We get from, we're now in the close to 12 million mark. In fact, and I, and I, and I love Python for this, it's very cool that we could do, you know, that we can go very easily and show you, okay, if we do eight letter passwords with all lowercase letters, that gets pretty high. One, so that's thousands, millions, billions, should be enough. Billions is nothing for computers, especially if you've got multiple computers working in parallel on the same problem. Um, we can add more letters. We can do capital letters as well. That would change this to 52 to the eighth, which gets us one, two, three, one, two, three, millions, billions into the trillions. And we could also add a couple, uh, we could also add those some, of some special characters. Numbers brings this up to 62 and, poss and common, uh, common special characters that get used. There are a bunch of them, but let's, let's be real. People only use a couple of them. Maybe that brings us up into, maybe that provides 10 more characters, let's say. And that gets up to here. I mean, even if I'm generous, and get this over to here. Let's say there's, you know, 90 possible characters. It's a pretty big number, pretty respectable, but that pales in comparison to a, let's say, a bunch of, uh, let's say, well, let's see, 26, something with all made out of all lowercase letters. So if we do four let if we do four 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 letter words connected to each other, four four letter words, which is 16 characters total. The exponent matters way more than the base when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, the, if they're five letter words instead, 26 to the 25th power. It just becomes way too difficult for computers to calculate. And we're only using lowercase letters. It suddenly becomes a lot easier for computers to remember. So anyway, that's part of the reason why longer passwords are better because they raise the exponent over there. They raise the amount of possibilities it has to do because it has 26 possibilities for the first letter, 26 second possibilities for the second letter. When you've got those kind of combinations, you multiply against each other. 
them against each other. So that's what, and so that's why we get something that's so ridiculous that I even know where, don't even know where to start with trying to name this number. It's very big. Okay. And even just adding a single more letter, 26 to the 20, sorry, 26 to the 26 power adds a whole number. At, each one of these 26, so each one of these raises an exponent means that basically it's going to take the computer 26 times longer to try to compute that. That's in it, that's a significant amount of time. All right. So that's what we've got for today. Um, again, to get credit for these, just make sure you run all the all the boxes. Um, again, I should have some more information about your exam on. Thursday, the I will give you at least a week's notice. I'm I'm still deciding whether to do it at the end of next week or the week after that. I want to try to do it at the end of next week, but again, it just really depends on how I feel everybody's progressing. All right. Take care. <laughs>